know how to take off a tire, this is probably a great time to stop and get some qualified help to help you do this. Now we've got some budgetary constraints here at Terraflex, so we weren't able to get any qualified technicians to help us do this. Luckily we've got Jen here to help us. Nice. Let's pull the tire and get her back up in the air and we can do this. We're ready to pull the control arms off of this axle. Now to do that, we could do it a couple of ways. We could support the axle with jack stands and hold it up until we can get the arms and the springs and everything off of it. Uh, another way to do it is to just leave our springs and our shocks all connected and we'll use those as supports. We'll just support the front of the axle so that it can't rotate on us and pull all the control arms off and the axle will stay right in position. So to do that, we'll just use a, a motorcycle strap here. We'll just tie it up around the front of the diff, hook it to itself there. We'll just take a little bit of pressure off it. That'll just hold it and then we'll go ahead and pull our arms. That'll hold the front of it. And It'll keep it in position. To take these control arms off, all you're going to need is a 21 millimeter and actually one 21 millimeter end wrench to hold just one bolt. The rest of them all have a captured nut on them. Hang on to all those bolts and nuts because you're going to need them putting the other control arms back on. Kind of notice how that frame bracket comes out. It has a little indexing tab on it that's going to have to slide up into a little bracket when we reassemble it. Wobbly socket is a valuable tool. You can just adjust this strap, take some of the load off it. You can just wind these bolts out. They're threaded all the way, so once again, hang on to those bolts and nuts and lead them when we put it back together. I usually like to start the bolt back into whatever I took it out of nut-wise. You don't get confused on what bolt went where lengthwise, it just makes it work. All right, we've got the rear all ready to go. We've got all the control arms off it. We're ready to start cutting and grinding. Once we get into cut and grind mode, we want to keep going. So let's get the front all prepped up ready so that we can also cut the front brackets off when we get into that zone. First thing we're going to do is get this drive line out of the way just like we did the rear. Now this drive line is, because it's angled, it doesn't have much access at the bottom here. But if we get up on top, it's going to give us quite a bit of room to pull those bolts out. Once again, a quarter inch air ratchet is your friend. Okay, next we'll pull off the front of it. Because this uh, yoke has kind of a captured end on it, it'll hold the drive line into place for us. We can pull off that front one and then just take it out from the front. For the front up here, we'll just switch it up to a, throw a 15 millimeter on it. Short work of these.
Okay. You notice that yoke has a little indexing ring on it. If it's been in there a while, it may be a little tougher to get about. You may have to pry on it, get it out. These are pretty new, so it comes out all right. Same with this back yoke. Okay, drive line out of the way. Rear arms all off, ready to cut the brackets off. We want to do the same on the front. Well, this front one, we're going to do it just a little bit different. We're going to let our sway bar links support the axle. We're going to have to take the shock off because we want to make sure that we have all of our lines freed up. They're getting pretty tight even right now, and we're going to lower this axle down a long way. So let's get make sure that we don't have any problems with our, our ABS lines, with our locker lines. Nothing's going to get stretched and pulled out. So let's come over and uh, we'll start by pulling the, the shock off. It's just an 18 millimeter. And with the shock out of the way, that'll give us access to this bracket that holds our brake line into position. All right, that gives us a lot of movement there. All right, with the brake lines loose, the only thing that's going to give us trouble is this uh, locker line, and maybe our breather. So we'll pop this uh, locker line loose from our control arm. As long as we're here, let's just take that upper control arm off. Again, that's going to be 18 millimeter. these control arms with the captured nuts on it, it makes it really nice. Looks like the only thing left that might get stretched out is going to be that breather tube. So we'll just pop that loose, take a look, everything looks good. We can come down and not really hurt anything. Last thing on this side is going to be to pull off the lower control arm. 21 millimeter again. those bolts for later. All right, before we undo the other side, I want to just throw a, another one of these bike straps up around the, the nose of this pinion, just so that it gives us a little support so that this axle doesn't rotate down on us. All right, we'll throw us another jack stand under this side, just to make it a little easier to get that shock off. 18 millimeter again. Okay, with that shock out of the way, we'll switch back over. 10 millimeter and pull that brake line off. Incidentally, this bracket that we're taking off is only going to be present on a 2011. So if you don't have this bracket on yours, that's why. It's a 2011 kind of a thing.
Okay, that's all free. We look around, there's no other lines or anything that are gonna give us any trouble. So let's just jump right to the control arm. We've already got the 18 mil on our air gun, so let's do the top ones first. Okay, we'll switch out our socket. That's a little wobbly. And it's out. Okay, we jump back over to our 21 millimeter. Get our lower arms off. Good to go.